This video has been brought to you today by VIKINGS! Not real Vikings though. That's terrifying. I mean, Vikings War of Clans, a top 5 ranking old school strategy mobile game that has you battling other clans, but not just other clans, other nations as well, making it a very fun game to play indeed. Do you know how to manage a lot of people? Then be a clan leader and use others to take over the empire. Do you have a killer instinct? Then go straight for battles yourself and conquer the land on your own. Do you know your way around money? Well then how about using that knowledge to build a prosperous city? Honestly, the amount of ways there are to play this game in the way you want makes it stand out for me and unable to put it down whenever I'm in the bathroom. Also, did you know that this game reached 20 million players recently? That's over 10 10 times the original total population of real life Vikings that lived all that time ago, so with your help we can make Vikings reign again. Not in real life though. That's terrifying. Install the game today in the description below with my links and get yourself 200 free gold and an initial protection shield. You won't only be getting a really fun game, but also we'll be supporting this channel, so thank you so much for listening and please enjoy the video. Salutations my beautiful people and welcome back to Bandicoot Month which has now become so popular that even game shows on TV can't stop talking about it. Which 1990s PlayStation game series was re-released as the N-Sane Trilogy? Yep, I'm not even joking. That was a brand new episode of whatever the hell that show is, I don't watch TV anymore, that was released in the UK only a couple of days ago. That's why I recorded it off of my phone. And yeah, we can safely say that Bandicoot Fever has officially gripped the UK. We are now rising to the chance of making June an official celebration of Crash Bandicoot. Sonic the Hedgehog. Anyway, today is not just another video for Bandicoot Month because we're also going to be deciding whether or not something deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. Yes, it's the first one of these. And last week I spent so much time replaying the entirety of the Insane Trilogy for the 10 Hardest Levels video that I just want to take a break for a second. I don't want to play any more Crash, I just want to watch something. And wouldn't you know, to my surprise, luckily enough, Crash Bandicoot, Latin name Completus Erectus, has actually starred in something that we can sit down and watch together. So let's do it. And I'm not just talking about game cutscenes, I'm talking about a fully fledged cartoon that was made all about Crash around the same time that the original game first came out. I don't know anything about it, I haven't even watched it before, but needless to say, I'm very excited. The only thing I really worry about is why I've never heard of it until now, and why it was hidden away for over 20 years. Why am I worried? Curiosities for dentists. Let's check it out right now! Dr. Cortex is a genius, a mental aberration. He's totally fixated on world domination. The local <laughs> island creatures are dull and obtuse. Until the evil doctor turns on his juice, he wants them for his troops. They come out income hopes, most especially crash. Crash Bandicoot should have been a genius, but he doesn't quite compute. Crash! Crash Bandicoot! Everything can happen now that Crash is in pursuit. Tom has been selected for running through the blender. Crash will fight to save her. He'll never surrender. He'll vanquish any villain to set his girlfriend free. He doesn't have a clue about how to proceed. His heart's in the right place. His brain's been rearranged. Crash! Crash Bandicoot! If Cortex isn't beaten, he'll rain a salute. Crash! Crash Bandicoot! Play our game and tell your friends so we'll make lots of loot! Come sit down on my knee, Sonny Jim. I think we need to have a little chat. What in the everlasting dragon? Fuck. Did I just witness that? I'm sorry, it's cool and everything that this has been released to the public after over 20 years of being locked in a vault, but come on, this was clearly locked in a vault for a good reason. That wasn't Bubsy cartoon levels of painful, but it is just as loud, irritating, and as much of an assault on your senses. This thing here tries way too hard to be, 
well, everything at once. There's so much going on in this one minute clip that it's a headache. It's over animated, it tries so desperately to be wacky and charming like Warner Brothers cartoons, it's embarrassing, and ends up just blowing its slapstick load all over the kitchen table and doesn't have the common courtesy to clean it up afterwards. The sound effects are over the top to the point of grating and take over the rest of the music, and how about that music? Like, does it even have a melody? This ain't no merry melody, it's a minging melody. Seriously though, what's the structure of the song? What's the hook of the song? For a cartoon, it's vital that your music be catchy and so memorable to the point of wanting to smack your head against the table. But here, I mean, it seems to have a few recurring features, like the way that the guy says the start of each verse. Cortex is a genius, a mental aberration. Tom has been selected for running through the blender. And the chorus. Crash! Crash Bandicoot! If you can even call it that, it's just yelling. But this bit on the pre-chorus. He wants them for his troops. His heart's in the right place. Like, what's this guy even trying to do with his voice? Is he going for whimsical? Evil? Posh? Fucking nuts, I don't know, but he's pretty good at that one. And aside from all of that, the colour choices are either washed out or clashed together in a distinctly ugly fashion. There's no nuance, consistency or theming with the visuals of the animation, and it also features creatures not even in the original game like Tiny Tiger and even the Komodo Brothers. Not to mention, look at Koala Kong and the rest of the gang before they get mutated. They look like real animals one second, and then they have their mutated forms, but when Crash gets experimented on, he looks exactly the same as he does once he's mutated. Why isn't he animated as an actual bandicoot at the start of it? And Torna looks exactly the same too. Big bouncing bandicoot breeds and all. Why does Torna have a skirt nipple? And please god, explain what the hell goes on in these few frames here. Crash swings out of the castle towards Cortex, who then proceeds to float across the screen and then remembers he should be over there and then stops following the screen. What is this line? Okay, let's just calm down for a second. There is actually a logical explanation behind all of this. Well, not the execution of the cartoon. I can't I can't explain any of that, but I mean the reason the cartoon exists in the first place. The video itself was unleashed onto YouTube on July 17th, 2015 by one of the producers for the original Crash Bandicoot, David Siller. According to him, this video was done by Universal Animation and wasn't a test animation for a pilot episode of a TV show, a trailer for the game, or anything like that. It was supposed to be part of the game itself, like an intro cutscene or something. He says that it wasn't used, possibly because it was a little bit too ambitious, and the way that he says it was trying to be humorous suggests to me that he didn't find it all that funny. In fact, this makes him sound a little bit like Captain Raymond Holt. That is without question the funniest story I've ever heard. Apparently, once the clip was shipped to Sony for approval, they rejected the idea of using it because they were strongly trying to push a 3D agenda with the PS1, and this wasn't the image they were going for with their platformers, which personally I think is bullshit, because if anything, this would have shown that the PS1 wasn't only capable of 3D platforming, but also could fit high quality FMB cartoons onto the discs as well. Further showing off how powerful the PlayStation was, so I think personally this was business talk for we think it's a little bit shit. I mean, David also says that the clip was never even embedded into the game as an easter egg when the disc could have easily fit it on. And he also says that many people close to the development of the original game didn't even know this existed, so this all feels like some kind of lost episode creepypasta. <gasps> Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends, and welcome to my channel, Mr. Cutty Pasta, where I know eight scary stories that are the scariest, and today we're talking about a frightening tale all about how Crash Band... Cash Banno Kish Bando Cre Rash Dandy Cut wasn't ever supposed to be a game but a cartoon instead. But a cartoon with a dark and powerful curse. <clears throat> Once upon a time there was a cartoon with a dark and powerful curse. It was Crash Bandicoot. And if you don't send the cartoon to five people in your MySpace friend list by midnight, you'll come into your bedroom and go follow the rest of the office. I may hold off on that channel idea forever. Anyway, yeah, this idea of the cartoon being a part of the game is further proven by the last part of the cartoon. Oh yeah, this is a two-parter. There's an intro, which we just watched, in complete disdain, and then there's a final, very short part that follows on perfectly from when you finish the final boss in the same location and everything. It isn't as annoying as the intro, luckily, but it's still rather confusing. Cortex gets chucked off of the blimp, falls into a universal submarine, alright, and then presses a self-destruct button for the very blimp Crash and Torna are standing on, murdering them, and then... ending. 
<laughs> effect. Oh yeah, <laughs> the end, question mark. You know, just in case that wasn't fucking conclusive enough. Although I guess you could look at this as a potential bad ending for the main game because grabbing all the gems allows you to escape Cortex's castle with Torna safely. And this may be what happens if you just finish Cortex's boss without all of that. So that's kind of cool as a little incentive to replay and complete it 100%, but still, I mean, it follows on from this. So I really couldn't care less about it. Just for a few more random little speculations. According to the Crash Bandicoot wiki, there's a theory that Jim Cummings voiced the intro, which if true, makes me extremely sad. Pooh? Crash and also, apparently this wasn't just hated by Sony, but also many of the production team that knew it existed in the first place. God, if any of you thought I was being harsh about this cartoon, this is coming from the people that actually made Crash Bandicoot a thing. This shit is brutal. In conclusion, this cartoon gets the slaughter today. Oh fuck, I need a new PC. And overall, I'm personally extremely happy that this was not used in the original Crash Bandicoot or wasn't a test animation for a pilot episode of a TV show or something, because Jesus Christ, that would have been Bubsy Card levels of unbearable for me. I suppose it's actually pretty cool that we at least have full on confirmation that Torna is indeed Crash's girlfriend. He'll vanquish any villain to set his girlfriend free. But everything else can crawl into a gaping chasm and eat wasps. The song is simply fucking annoying, no other word. I mean, how could you enjoy <laughs> over and over again with no pacing or catchy melody? The style and the contents of the cartoon are far from a good representation of what the game is actually like, and honestly, I totally understand why they didn't use it in the end. I am sure that a ton of love, energy, and work went into making this. I mean, if you just look at it, you can see the effort that's gone into it. And I don't hold anything negative personally against anyone that was behind it. I mean, Crash Bandicoot at the time was a brand new IP. Universal didn't know how to promote it to their target audience. I suppose then it's just lucky that this never transpired into anything more than what it is right now, because Jesus Christ, if I had to watch through that and it was unskippable every single time I booted up one of the trickier 3D PS1 platformers I've ever played, I think I'd have to self-asphyxiate. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this video on Crash Bandicoot's very strange and awful cartoon that was released a couple of years ago. Yeah, very strange, wasn't it? And special thanks to every single person on the screen right now that has helped support this channel via Patreon in the description below. And special, special thanks to the top tier supporters. Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Matthew Hubble, Chumbawamba, Cyberpunk Symphony, Star Ira Lance J, Sakari, The Pinkinator, Binary Code, Exopaz, Thomas Olsen, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B, QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Gunara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.